I want to move on to the tax exodus. That's something of a theme on this program. That is a tax exodus, people going from high tax blue states to low tax red states. Look who's here on this subject, amazingly enough. Mm. David Barnson. I know him as a financial guy. He's the author of this book. It's a good book, by the way, Crisis of Responsibility. And uh, he's the chair of the Barnson Group, aren't you? Yes, sir. And you've got a house in Newport Beach and you've got a house in New York City. You're getting uh, killed, aren't you? That's it? right. I didn't, <clears throat> didn't consult with my tax advisor. But, uh, <laughs> you couldn't see it coming, could you? Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting uh, dilemma because the fact of the matter is there's a lot of money earned in Southern California. There's a lot of money earned in Northern California. Obviously, Manhattan, the finance capital of the world. And, and me and my family thoroughly enjoy being in both places. Places except for on April 15th. And the reality <laughs> is that this is an unsustainable phenomenon. These blue states, ironically, that say that they support the middle class and, and the kind of the little guy and so forth, the only people that will be left in California, and it's getting there now, are very high income earning, high net worth people who can afford it mm -hmm. and sort of have surpassed the caring about the tax liability, very coastal, very affluent. Yes, places like Newport Beach, but Monterey Peninsula, things of that mm -hmm. nature. And then people that don't pay any taxes on the very, very low end. That middle class has been completely hollowed out in California. Where, where do you, forgive me for asking, but I mean, look, you, you're a bi-coastal guy. Where do you pay the most tax? Where's your greatest tax liability? Is it California or is it New York? I mean, it's very close, but the top rate in California on a state basis is 13.3%. It has been since 2013, uh -huh. and it was made permanent a couple years ago. And then in Manhattan with the city taxes, it's 129 so so on the margin, anyone in either state is over 50 percent so, the high end. Yeah, if you're a one percenter in California or New York City, you're paying a rate of double-digit taxes. And Absolutely. you cannot deduct those state and local taxes mm -hmm. against your feds. California you has did. two rates below the 13.3 that are double-digit state rates. So you don't have to be a one percenter to be paying over 10 percent wow. mm -hmm. state rate in California. And, by the way, still has the largest unfunded pension liabilities yes. oh. with double-digit state taxes. So there you go. Florida looks attractive, but uh, <laughs> let, me get, let me get on to this. Uh, you're a market guy. This market keeps just going sideways. I mean, I don't see any real clear trends since the highs reached in January. That's right. What kind of, what do you buy? Well, I think you buy those things that have gotten particularly cheap, and we highlighted this morning now, I'm really at a place where I love Procter Gamble. We've owned it a long time, and it's now down 20% on the year, where to me, you have an opportunity, the yield has now come above 4%, they've raised the dividend every year for over 60 years. And just on a valuation basis, they have more things to sort through, but the, the stock was trading over 20 times. It's now down to 16 times earnings. They still are growing free cash flow about 10% this year. But what, what is the dividend payment? What's the yield? It's a little over 4%, dividend yield on Procter Gamble. But debt safe. Okay. Oh, absolutely. All right, David, uh, we expect to see you in uh, our house in Naples very soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our new you, set. Yeah. yeah, our new set. We're going to do the broadcast from Naples. Love it, love it. Working on it.